Hold Up the Sky is a collection of science fiction short stories by Xi Jin Liu, who is uh, the most famous Chinese science fiction author and the only one that I know. I'm a big fan of the author. I've read Three Body Problem, which I think is a masterpiece. Uh, it's one of the best things I've ever read, not just in sci-fi, but ever. It's, it's brilliant. This, I'm going to be honest, I, I have not read anything else by Xie Jin Yu apart from the Three Body Problem. And I was surprised by how bad the short stories were. Though I wasn't surprised when I read in the introduction that these these um, are from the, the previous 15 years. So some of them are older than the three body problem and some of them are more recent. So it's a hodgepodge of you know, different parts, different periods in his career. There are um, 12 stories, sorry, 11 stories in this. And of those 11 stories, I would say only three of them are good. And um, there's really only... Uh, there's really only maybe two really great stories in this, and that's about it. And most of the rest are just shite. So I'll go through the different stories and tell you what I think of them. The first story is called The Village Teacher. This one is it's, it's, it's kind of touching in a really obvious kind of tearjerker way but it's almost like he's it's like a tearjerker story which was manufactured on an assembly line it's it's like it's designed to be sad in a really obvious two-dimensional way it's still pretty decent and one thing i really like about it is the the backwardness of the village i like how that's described there's a brilliant part in it where the the english translation reads the village is so poor that the birds flying overhead wouldn't shit. I laughed out loud at that. I thought that was brilliant. All of these stories contain flashes of brilliance, but uh, most of them overall, the average quality is low. So yeah, the village teacher, that first one, it wasn't great. And it, it has a, there's a serious problem with the end of it, which to, for me just doesn't work. And I'll get into more of that in the discussion. The time migration is the second story. The time migration is shit, plain and simple. There are, I, there are no characters in it. That There just aren't. There's the ambassador who is the woman who has been designated to make the main political decisions for the time migrants. And there's no, there's no characters. They're just, they're just there to speak lines when they come out of stasis and they see you know, the world that they arrive into. But it's crap and the ending's crap. And I, I, I just don't buy a lot of it. And I, as I say, I'll get into why once I move on to the, the discussion part of the video. This is the review. 2018 for one, that is 2018, first of April. I think that's how that's, that's the title of this story. Is, uh, it's, so, it, it's so forgettable that I'm actually struggling to remember it at present. Yes, it's about a software engineer who is trying to save some money for an operation that he wants. This one's not bad. It's not great. It's very middle of the road. It has some very interesting ideas, but it's got weak characters. Not much happens. It kind of just stagnates in this area of mediocrity. And this is one of the few stories in the collection that really doesn't have any flashes of brilliance or great moments. It's just pretty dull from start to finish fire in the earth i think is quite bad it is mostly quite boring it's predictable the ending is very cliche and the the writing style is good and it does have some good moments and it has a nice dramatic build up but mostly it's just pretty dull contraction was one of the one of the three really good stories. Contraction is very good. And maybe the reason for that is that it's quite simple. The entire story in Contraction just takes place in one room. It's really good because it's building up to a moment and you think, wow, what's going to happen when we hit that moment, when, the, when this thing that everybody's waiting for happens, when that does happen, you know, when, when they get to that moment, what's going to happen? 
So it's fun. It's kind of like a what's in the box with a timer type story. Really fun. And the end of it has, uh, I really like the ending of that. So contraction is great. Uh, no problems with that one. That was one of my favorites. Murder, murder, when I started reading Murder, that's when I started to realize what, that's when I realized, wow, this, this is a bad book. Murder is, is just it bored the shit out of me. I, I actually skipped most of the first chapter. It was just so boring. I just didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about their motivations or their intentions. I couldn't, honestly, I really couldn't even tell who was who. The characters were so bland. And there was one scene where these two characters were having a conversation and they're so, they're so similar. I couldn't even tell who the hell was speaking in <laughs> at any given moment. Like it, was, it wasn't even well written. Um, so Mirror was crap. It has a really, really good idea in it. A really fun, quite brilliant idea, but I, I don't think he does a very good job with this idea. It's got a brilliant seed of the story, but he, the story itself just, no. And it, it could have been so much more. The way the story ends, you know, what happens to humanity because of this thing that they created, I don't, I don't believe that's what would happen. And I'll explain more of that in the discussion. Ode to Joy is garbage. Ode to Joy, I just thought was the worst thing in this book. It's got this really horrible, cheesy ending that I cannot stand. Um, some of it doesn't make sense. And the behavior of the characters, again, doesn't make any sense. And he suggests in Ode to Joy that the UN is, um, is intended to be for the benefit of mankind and that the UN is, is behaving in a way that benefits human beings globally, which is just nonsense. Uh, but that's a political thing. I just disagree with that perspective. But at the same time, if he's writing about the UN, he has a responsibility to know what exactly the UN is and who it is and what they're about. And he doesn't seem to know that. But that's not why I disliked with the joy. I disliked it because it's really boring. Uh, the ending's crap and not a whole hell of a lot happens in it. And yes, I know all about the symbolism of it and what he's doing and what he's exploring. I don't care. It's still a crap story. Full spectrum barrage jamming is, I mean, it, it's sick form military sci-fi. It's awful. It's just junk. The, the ending makes no sense at all. The characters are crap. The event the main event around which the narrative is built is crazy and makes no sense. It's the kind of thing that you would expect a 16 year old to write. It's, albeit it's, you know, there's good writing in it and there's bits and pieces that are decent, but it's just crap. It's maybe the worst thing in this. Sea of Dreams is a very nicely written story. It's, it's got some of the nicest writing in there. And I suspect that's probably one of the more recent ones because it does have that refined quality of experienced writing in it. It's got a very nice, a very nice idea. And I, I really like the relationship between the two main characters. The problem is that it, it doesn't work scientifically. It makes absolutely no sense, not even logically. You, don't need, you wouldn't need to be a scientist to realize what is wrong with Sea of Dreams from a scientific perspective. It's really, really obvious. Anyone would read this and think, wait, no, no, that doesn't make any sense. Sea of Dreams, really nice as a kind of raw piece of artistic writing, but as a story and as a plot, it just doesn't work. Cloud of Poems is great. Cloud of Poems is the, definitely the best thing in this. The reason Cloud of Poems works is because it's absolutely insane. It's, it's totally surreal. It's sci-fi surrealism, so it's not trying to be realistic and it doesn't need to be realistic. It doesn't even need to adhere to the laws of physics, which it doesn't. It's basically um, a kind of Kafka-esque semi-nightmare written in a modern sci-fi style with a sci-fi setting. It's, it's good. It's really, really good. Uh, there are three main characters in it one of whom is deliberately one-dimensional and uh, the other two are, are quite good. That's a, that's a fantastic bit of work, Cloud of Poems. 
The last one, the thinker, is really nice. That one kind of reminded me of Haruki Murakami. It's got this kind of um, lovers divided by time theme in it. It's beautifully written and uh, it's very reflective and it takes its time and it's really nicely paced. And it has, um, has some nice sort of poetic passages in it. And it has a, it's an attempt to kind of present the, the importance of, you know, human love within the vast infinity of the cosmos. It's a really, really nice bit of work. Um, probably the most beautiful piece in this collection. Right, so that is all of them. Overall, it, it overall, like once you average everything out, it's pretty weak. It's piss weak, actually. I would only recommend Cloud of Poems and Contraction and The Thinker. Those three, and that's three out of 11. That's pretty damn bad. Um, there are flashes of brilliance in most of the stories. You know, in The Village Teacher, the... Oh, and by the way, this is, I'm going to start the discussion now. So the review part is over. Now I'm actually discussing it, so spoilers. The, in the village teacher, I thought that the, uh, the manner in which he describes the teacher's illness and the teacher's decision to go back to this shit stinking little village to continue educating the kids, it's very touching and it's very nice. And I can relate to that personally since I'm a teacher. So that was nice. Um, the ending didn't really work because I don't think that the children would have been able to understand the questions that were being put to them because they had learned Newton's laws by parroting them, not necessarily because they understood them. Although maybe, maybe you could get that ending, but I doubt it. Um, but it did have really nice moments. The, the village teacher, uh, the time, time migration uh, just crap. At the end of it, this idea that human beings would eventually just disappear into the internet basically human beings would create this vast digital universe for themselves and they would turn it into um a sort of do whatever you want godlike fantasy world where you can you know create your own universes and rule over it and things like that sort of like an endless user-made video game i, I just don't believe that that um, human beings would behave in that manner or would really want that uh, and then there, the decision to humanity's decision to eventually extinct itself. I saw it coming, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I just, I thought the time migration was very weak and I didn't like anything in it really, nothing at all. Some of the suggestions of what future incarnations of earth would look like were nice, but that was about it. 2018-4-1. Um, yeah, crap, bland. Just let, let's move on. Fire in the Earth, again, pretty crap, pretty bland. Um, nice and dramatic, but it honestly, it reads more like a, you know, like a second or third read Hollywood script that never gets made into a movie, quite honestly. Contraction was great. Contraction, I thought, was a really fun story. It wasn't too long. It certainly it didn't overstay its welcome. And the ending, the twist where the, the text reverses and everything starts moving backwards. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, mirror is just, um, yeah, as I say, mirror is, if you're having trouble sleeping, read mirror, you will fall right to sleep. That is a boring bit of work. And the idea that if there was this, uh, this universal mirror that would show everything, it doesn't, and that people would respond to this by behaving very well. Now, I don't think that that's true at all. I think people would respond to such a device by the morality would change very much, but honestly, people would, if, if such a mirror existed whereby you could, you could see anything that had ever happened at any point in human history, people would use it for pornography, okay? They would want to watch JFK fucking Marilyn Monroe, right? They would want to watch Caesar fucking Cleopatra. They would want to watch William Shakespeare have affairs and, and, and spy on, you know, celebrities having, famous celebrities in the 80s having sex. It would just become used for pornography, all right? And that's it. Obviously, people would use it for spying as well, but things would get a lot more complicated. People might start hiring doubles and all sorts of crazy shit would happen. But honestly, I think eventually people would just stop caring, to be perfectly honest. It wouldn't be that big a deal. Like nothing is. Nothing is that big a deal once it's been around for long enough. 
Anyway, next is Ode to Joy. Ode to Joy was awful. I thought the ending was cheesy and dumb and stupid and didn't like any of it at all. Bored me. Full spectrum barrage jamming, like I said, really just crappy sci-fi um, military action. Why would, why would the Allies invade Russia during the Cold War? It doesn't even make any sense. What's, what's the political background to this? What, that, there was, there's absolutely no reason for that. The Allies, the, the Western nations didn't want to invade Russia. They, they, they didn't really even want the USSR to collapse most of them because they were quite comfortable with the status quo. It gave them power. It gave them excuses for gigantic military forces in various parts of the world. It gave them an excuse to maintain their empire. When the USSR fell, it, I mean, it was kind of a problem. So no, that, that doesn't make any sense that they would invade Russia. Just crazy stuff and really cheesy and stupid at the end. If at the end, this little ship did go toward the sun, they would all die of radiation poisoning or they would melt long before they got to the sun. So it doesn't work. Sea of Dreams. If a creature, an alien came along and sucked all the water out of the earth, we'd all be dead very, very, very quickly. It wouldn't take, wouldn't take a few years. Uh, for a start, you lose the uh, greenhouse gas effect from all the water vapor that's now gone. So the earth just becomes very, very cold very, very quickly and we all freeze to death. Or let's say that doesn't happen for some reason. Uh, the crops just, we can't grow any crops because there's no water, so the crops die. Or we all suffocate to death because there's no, there's no water for the trees or you know, some other catastrophe happens, but you can't just remove all the earth's water and expect that we'll be able to live for years afterwards. That's ridiculous. We'll all just die and we do it quickly. Next cloud of poems yeah terrific really terrific i loved the it was really vivid i could really see that one in my head when the god was having tea with liu bao is that his name when they were just discussing stuff and drinking and then the dinosaur was funny yeah that was a good one that was a good one and it was crazy and it was surreal and it was kafka-esque i enjoyed it i really enjoyed cloud of poems and the thinker the last one is lovely it's a nice, you know, it's like a, like I said, it reminded me of Murakami stuff and yeah, really nice, really nice that one. Yeah. All right. So it has bits and pieces that are good. If you, if somehow, if for whatever reason, this, this book does manifest itself within your possession or come into, you come into contact with it somehow, I'm not, don't buy it. It'd be a waste of your money, but it is worth reading Cloud of Poems and The Thinker. They're very nice. Contraction, you can take it or leave it, but those two are nice and the rest is shit. So overall, I would give it four out of 10. Um, yeah, it feels like sketches of ideas that would eventually be incorporated into three body problem or which are derived from three body problems. So pretty poor work from Xu Jinya.